and the numbers. Good morning, brethren. Saints, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, ground in pillar of truth. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me in the scriptures that we will be reading today. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures we will be reading today. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Read along with me. Because my mouth will go quicker than my brain. You've watched any of these videos. You know that already. So, uh, so please, get the scriptures and read along with me. Uh, feeling almost okay today. Almost. Almost. Uh, I want, I'm saying that, one second. Okay, yeah, you, you're right. You don't need to see me blowing my nose on video. <laughs> but um, feeling pretty decent today. Um, still not out of the woods yet. Uh, you need to know this, but um, getting better. And for those of you who are praying and have prayed, thank you. Ecclesiastes 5. Today we're going to be touching on hoarding. Yes, hoarding. Now, before we get going, our, our base, base text today is going to be Ecclesiastes 5, verses 9 on to verse 17. We're going to have some light expository here, just light, but um, before we get into this, number one, let's establish this, number one, Scripture is not against a man or even a woman having money or having wealth or anything like that, okay? Abraham, he was wealthy, okay? Abraham was very rich, okay? King Solomon, okay? People will be like, well, Sol the riches of Solomon messed him up. No, no, strange women messed Solomon up. You might want to get cute and say, well, he wouldn't have had those women if he didn't have the riches. That's a good argument. That is a good argument. I might have to give you that. But scripturally, it is specific that the that Solomon loved many strange women. Okay, and also it is to note that the amount of gold that came to Solomon in one year was what? Check this out: six hundred and six uh, six 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 talents of gold or something like that. Okay. <laughs> It, um, yeah, that was not a coincidence, all right? Having money, having wealth in and of itself is not a bad thing in and of itself. Scripture is not against someone having wealth or riches. What scripture is against is when a man or even a woman has riches and they elevate themselves up here because of those riches. Or they make those riches their idol. Okay? That's why in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 where Paul again, he talks about not many mighty, not many noble. Not many wise. I know I just messed up the thing, made it backwards there, but that's not the point. Okay? But uh, that's why Paul says, because someone who is wealthy has a lot more to be tripped over than us poor folk. Okay? Scripture is not against you having money. Scripture is against you making an idol of your money. And setting yourself up on a pinnacle because of your money. Okay? And also, too, the uh, topic about hoarding. There's a difference between hoarding just to have stuff and having a stockpile, say, at, for an inheritance. And Scripture is not against an inheritance whatsoever. 
No, I mean that that I mean a, a, a child could uh, prove that in scripture that God's uh, not against an inheritance. I mean a child could prove that. Like, oh, that God's for an inheritance. So I'm like, okay. For example, if you're a father and mother and you got a little what what's the term? Nest egg built up as an inheritance for your son or your daughter or your children, that's fine, okay? God's not against that, okay? So I want to make that, I'll put that out there at the beginning. So if someone comes around, doesn't want to watch at the very beginning and goes elsewhere and you miss this, hey, that's your fault, not mine, okay? <laughs> but God's not against um, you having a little stockpile there as means for an inheritance or necessarily that things might be a little bit more easier for you in your time of old age, okay? God's not against that. God is against it when it becomes an idol. And things like that, especially money, especially nowadays, man, um, can become an idol very quickly. And hoarding. I've known hoarders. Hoarding. Hoarding. Like having a garage full of stuff that you don't even know that most of the time you forget you have, but you don't want to get rid of it because you're, you're a hoarder. You hoard stuff just to have stuff. And, the, and people get cute with that. It's like, well, it has sentimental uh, value then why is it packed in a garage under boxes and boxes of other rubbish that you can't even get at, that you totally forgot it was there, and then to, keep, to cling to it, you um, say, oh, it's sentimental? No. 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 And this is what, this is more along the lines that we're going to be talking about. Because, for example, I have known these millionaire Christians. My father. He's a millionaire. And he'd be the first one to tell you that. He loves his money. He loves money more than anything. Okay? Of course, he would deny that. But you shall know them by their fruits. Okay? When everything that one speaks about revolves around money, that's bad. That's bad. Okay? That is bad. So, with that little thing out there, let's, let's get to this. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 9 on to verse 17. Moreover, the profit of the earth is for all. The king himself is served by the field. Well, something you, you got to remember about a lot of these rich people who um, take their wealth and rub it in your face and look down on you as, a, as if you are a peon because they have it and you don't. <laughs> God hates those types of people. He really does. God abhorreth the covetous. Okay? But you got to remember, the king himself is served by the field. The wealthy individual also has to go to the store. The wealthy individual also has to go to the john, the bathroom or whatever, okay? You got to remember, they're not above us in the fact that they are mankind, okay? That you got to remember. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. Nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This also is vanity. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Again, my, my, my father. I love my father. We don't talk anymore, unfortunately. He thinks I'm a heretic, and I know he's a heretic. Okay? Um, I love him. We don't talk anymore. He thought he thinks I'm out of out of whack because uh, I stick to the authorized version of the scriptures, and uh, I'm very adamant against certain sects of 
Well, I'm out against, adamant against Christianity, aren't I? <laughs> yes, I am. But I, I love the man dearly. He is my father. I'd like to see him one more time before I die because I don't know if I'm going to see him up there, to be honest with you. But that, that, um, I don't want to even talk about that too much. But um, even he, he's a good, good example of this. He's a millionaire. He lives comfortably now. He's retired. He's in Arizona. Uh, he, pastor of a church building. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, okay. He, he's doing well for himself. Great. But if there's another cool million to be made, another million won't hurt. Huh? See, and that's, that's the thing. Once it's like the, uh, like the one guy from the military said, you know, um, the saying was, once you get the taste of blood, uh, you want more. Like, Dude, okay. <laughs> but what he was getting at, once you've made a million dollars, if you can make another million, why not? Why not? A little bit won't, don't hurt. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of men, after the rudiments of this world, and not after Christ. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But yes, how is, why is it that someone who is a millionaire, let's see them turn down the chance to make another million. And be like, no, dude, no, dude. I got me a, I got me a million bucks. <laughs> My bills are paid. I got food in the fridge. I, I can go to the store. And if there's something we need, we don't have to uh, uh, wait for whatever. You know, we can get what we need. Okay. If there's a petty want, we can get it. Okay. No, I, I don't need another million. But see, in an era of covetousness, where is that? Where is that? Now, I'm sure there are like some of these gazillionaires like that filth, um, what's his name? Help me. Uh, Gates. Gates of Hell. Who's a philanthropist and bazillionaire, whatever. Okay? I'm sure he turns stuff down just because he's got like, oh, I've, <laughs> I've got it coming out of my nose and whatnot. You know, I'm sure he does it just to keep up appearances. But but still, still, most of the, the millionaires, when they, you know, give them a chance to get another million, it's like, sure. Why isn't, why aren't they like, like no, I'm fine. I wonder. Hmm. Because he that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. Nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. This is also vanity. <laughs> <clears throat> when goods increase, they are increased that eat them. <laughs> and what good is there to the owners thereof, saving the beholding of them with their eyes? Oh boy, and here's a good kick to me. Here's a really good kick to me. Ecclesiastes 12.12. 12. <laughs> and further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. You see that bookshelf there? That's nothing. Oh, now, for someone who doesn't have uh, even five books, that's something. I, I beg your pardon. That was bad of me to say that. I'm sorry. The, this, this is a gift. This is resource. Okay? This is, uh, you know, gifts from brethren, stuff that I bought at the resale shops and stuff like that. When, I, when me and my wife lived on Madison Street, that was times three. Yes, sunshine. Big part. 
that was times three. When we lived over on Madison Street, I had not that tall, but deep, <laughs> deep <laughs> uh, bookcases. I had three of those things. Three bookcases full of books. Full of books. And I couldn't get enough. Couldn't get enough. I, I, I had, I had, you know, and granted, there's, you know, His Holiness, for example. Um, he stands in front of his books to, to give off the, uh, you know, doing that, by the way, doing that, standing in front of books like that, it's a visual stimuli to show you that the individual who's standing in front of them is learned, learned or knowledgeable because of look at all the books. It's a visual stimuli. Okay, all right. Hey, I, 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 not, not trying to get off on that uh, lovely individual, but that's a great example. Okay, that's a great example. All right, uh, all right. Where it says here, uh, when goods increase, they are increased that eat them. And what good is there to the owners thereof, saving the beholding of them with their eyes? Okay. May, making of many books, there is no end. I had three bookcases full of books. I got rid of a ton of them. A ton of them. And I wasn't going to read them all. <laughs> There's no way. Like with these, I haven't read all of these. They're there for resource. If the Lord's like, Brad, you know, get that one book. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. The Lord has done that on many occasions. Okay. The same with hoarding. In other things you have enough of one thing but yet you want more and more and more and more and more and why saving the beholding of them with your eyes a visual stimuli hmm. what, are, what are you putting before your eyes that you need to be visually stimulated like that to be reassured by what you see because uh, don't we walk by faith and not by sight. Mm. Very interesting, huh? Very interesting. I've known hoarders. I've known hoarders. Where, you know, I've, you know, like on, you heard about being in places where you have a pathway with stuff. You know, a house is filled with stuff. My uh, aunt and uncle were hoarders uh, on my mother's side they're in hell with my mother but uh, they they were hoarders too and they had like garbage or what they would call stuff treasure uh, <laughs> piled up in the room where there was a narrow walkway you know like something you would see on tv okay hmm. verse 12 <clears throat> the sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he, he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. Now, right away, you might say, well, rich people, they, they sleep like babies, you know. But think about this. Yeah, okay, yeah, rich people, millionaires, they sleep like babies because they got all this opulence and whatnot. Take that away from them. Take that away from them. Hmm? The laboring man. Okay? The sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much. Eat little or much. Having only what is necessary. Uh, having just what he needs, whether a little or much. Doesn't matter. Why? Because in all labor there is profit. In all labor there is profit. Okay? All right? I, I've, I've had this horrific thought before. Like when, when the banks in America crash, um, I, I see my poor father like being horrified all the money that he has up in an electronic puff. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. It might be in a bank in Swiss. Uh, yeah. Okay. Whatever. Psalm 49. Psalm 49. Again, as we, st as we stated at the beginning of this video, there ain't nothing wrong with having money. There ain't nothing wrong with it at all. There ain't nothing wrong with it. It's when it becomes the main thing in and of itself to you. When it becomes a thing of boasting. When it becomes an idol. Then that's a problem. And there again, that's why uh, Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians, again, not many mighty, not many noble, not many wise. Because they can become too self-sufficient. Psalm 49, beginning at verse 6. They that trust in their wealth, I said it that way purposely, and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious and ceaseth forever. And of course, that, that, that we've got to go here. Uh, the first Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 21. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers but by the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifested manifest in these last times for you who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God, not in material things. And that's the problem. That's the problem with all, a lot of Christianity, is that they make you the focal point, and when they say to you, God's got a plan for your life, well, yes, he does, to know him and serve him. But what Christianity is telling you when they say that, it's like God loves you and wants to bless you and give you the best of all things. That's what they all mean when they say that. All of them. All the Christians. When they throw out that cliche. That God's got a plan for you. Man. Well, yes, he does. That is truth. That is truth. But see, they're taking a truth and turning it into a lie. And they're basing it off of your covetousness. Okay? Back to Psalm 49. That he should live forever and not see corruption. For he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool and the brutish person perish, and leave their wealth to others. Hmm. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, like he says in Ecclesiastes, how dieth the uh, wise man as the fool? What does that mean? We all die. <laughs> How does the wise man die? Like the fool. It's not the actual how like, a, like of an aneurysm or getting hit by a Mack truck. No, the question is, well, why am I different seeing how we both die? Even though I'm in a palace and he's on the street. That's what that's talking about, okay? Don't, don't get confused on, like, well, he's talking about, well, a uh, king might die uh, from food poisoning. No, he, what he means by that is all people die, okay? How dieth the wise man is a fool. Everybody dies, okay? <clears throat> For he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool and the brutish person perish, 
and leave their wealth to others. Ah, that's the thing. Yeah. Very quickly, um, a good example of what, what this is addressing is that Jerk Hiles. Jerk Hiles. Uh, and his uh, guy who's basically taking up after him is that disgusting Steven Anderson, who's still around apparently. <laughs> oh, boy. Boy, uh -huh. I'd hate to have, I'd hate to meet that guy. N number one, he'd probably shoot me. <laughs> but um, uh, he, he's you talk about a cancerous individual. And plus, Stephen Anderson, you're a sodomite. I know you are. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> yeah, you got a wife and you got kids, but deep down, boy. You're a sodomite. <laughs> anyway, but Jerk Hiles, he died a wealthy man. I mean, he and there was a, uh, His Holiness had those videos on, um, on Jerk Hiles, which were really disturbing. Good, good videos, but uh, the, the guy was a, was a filth bag puke. I mean, he was. He was evil. But he, he had, there was a video or a video, a uh, so-called one of his sermons, um, <laughs> by the way, a heretic that reads five verses of scripture is more of a sermon than Jack Hiles ever gave. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, there was a sermon where um, Hiles was boasting about, I bought this, I bought that, I bought this. It sounded like my father. I, I bought this, I bought this, uh, I feel like Paul with all the people I led to, Lord. Ah. Ah. Oh, that, 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 that you can't see, I give me goosebumps just thinking about that. Yeah, he, he's the one who said that. Yeah. Ah. Jack Hiles had children. Did Jack Hiles leave his wealth unto his children for inheritance? No. He left it to the organization. Oh, the Jesuits? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He didn't leave any of his stuff behind for his children. Or his wife, which he betrayed on numerous occasions. That whole, that whole story about that Niship girl or whatever, and Jack is just... Oh, you know, I don't know how that guy didn't go up to Hiles and just <laughs> smack him in the head with a hammer. I don't know why he didn't do that. I understand J uh, Jack Hiles was very con uh, manipulating, was a very good mind control. Um, ex he was an expert in mind control, actually. Um, when you actually listen to Jack Hiles, uh, that, that guy, he was trained. He was trained. He, he knew the tonations, the, the um, pitch, the rhythmic of, uh, style of his speaking uh, was all controlled, was all there to control your mind. Dangerous guy. But point being, point being, he didn't leave any of his, uh, his wealth to his kids. He didn't. He didn't. Verse 11, their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. He is like the beasts that perish. And the beast that perish goes downward to the earth, okay? Because beasts have a body and a spirit. Only mankind has a soul. Okay, and that's in Ecclesiastes 2, I believe that is. Uh, yeah, that uh, the spirit of the man that goeth, goes upward and the spirit of the beast that returneth to the earth. Okay, beasts do not have a soul. And that's very telling too when the Lord in Isaiah chapter 1, 
um, looks to the beasts as being a little bit more better at the time than Israel, okay? Verse 13, this their way, this their way is their folly, yet their posterity approve their sayings, Selah. Well, look at how well so-and-so is doing. Look at him. He's got how many cars? How many houses? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And you're barely... Yeah, you know. Yeah. And you're just barely scraping by. We... Uh, like that Jack Hiles guy said, we, we barely afford to pay the bills. And the guy died a multi-billionaire and didn't leave anything to his kids. <laughs> I hope, you, I hope you're nice and toasty down there, you bastard. <laughs> he didn't know who his father was, I don't think. I think he really thought he was serving the Lord until he died. I, I really do. I really do, okay? <laughs> anyway, let's continue. Like sheep that are laid in the grave, death shall feed on them, and the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning. And their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave. For he shall re receive me. Shila. Be not afraid when one is made rich. When the glory of his house is increased. For when he dieth he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Note that descend. Doesn't say ascend, does it? Don't look at me, look at the verse. For when he dieth, he, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Hmm. Interesting. Why isn't it ascend after him? Hmm? I'll let you figure that one out. <clears throat> Though while he lived... He blessed his soul. And men will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself. And what does scripture, just a couple of verses here, have to say about that? Luke chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. <coughs> but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. And of course, John 5, John 5, <laughs> John 5, uh, come on, John 5, 44. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? How can ye believe? How is it possible for you to believe when you're more concerned about public opinion? <coughs> how can you believe? How can ye, plural, believe? when you justify yourselves before men and highly esteem that which God calls an abomination. Hmm? Verse 18 in Psalm 49 again. Though while he lived, he blessed his soul, and men will praise thee while, when thou doest well to thyself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. Hmm. Man that is in honor and understandeth not <clears throat> departing from evil is like the beasts that perish. Also showing you the dispensational difference there. Because, hey, sleazy believest under the law. What was it? By grace through faith. Oh, shut up. No, it was by faith and works. Eternal security wasn't there under the law. 
So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Man that is an honor and understandeth not, departing from evil, is like the beasts that perish and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth, and beasts have no soul. Back to Ecclesiastes 5. <clears throat> Back to Ecclesiastes 5. Picking up at verse 13. There is a sore evil which I have seen under the sun, namely, riches kept for the owners thereof to their hurt. Hoarding. Hoarding. God is not against you having money. Again, he's not. He's not against you having a little nest egg or whatever. You have children. He's not against you giving them an inheritance. God forbid. No, he's not against that at all. Okay? But when riches are kept to you, they're hurt. Just so you can look at that, that bank statement and be like, oh, look at all those millions. Uh, I can buy me one of them big, uh, uh, big, giant gas guzzling trucks that cost upwards to eighty thousand dollars for a truck eighty thousand dollars for a truck you know like they like them them pathetic robinson guys who drive around in those big gas guzzlers you know those water dog people you know it's like dude <laughs> You know, what, 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 how much that truck cost you? $70,000, I bet? And then those guys probably paid outright for it, too. They're like, give me a break. It's like, well, Brad, they've earned it. You're right, they have. But they ain't saved. And what's disgusting is those guys uh, seem to be more charitable than most other Christians do. And that's disgusting. That's disgusting. Yeah. Christians. I'm not a Christian, by the way. Okay? Let's continue. But those riches but those riches perish by evil travail. And he begetteth us begetteth a son, and there is nothing in his hand. Again, again, Jack Hiles. Again, these guys, these millionaire Christians who have children. Uh, look at that guy, Kent Hovind, who at one time was quite a wealthy guy until he, he irritated his Jesuit masters and they put him in prison. And then he comes out, uh, comes out, he was already a psychopath. <laughs> but uh, he comes out and they just make him look like a fool. And yeah. Yeah, and by the way, Kent Helvin, uh, I don't believe is saved. He's, an, I believe he's a Jesuit. Okay, all right. But uh, again, the Jack Hiles thing died a multimillionaire, left nothing to his kids, I left it to the business, the church. Yeah, yeah. As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor, which he may carry away in his hand. Job. Job 1. Where are you going? Job 1, verses 20, on to verse 22. <clears throat> and Job, who was very rich. But how many of these rich men today? There, again, there is... <coughs> pick your part. There is so much to be learned today from the book of Job. Uh, I might put that in the description box for, for you. Uh, we'll, we'll see. But um, here Job lost everything in one foul swoop. One right after the other, after the other, after the other. He lost everything. 
Then Job arose, rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. We, okay, you've, we've read this before. Do you understand the gravity of this? Read, read Job chapter 1 today on your own time. There, there's your assignment. Okay, read Job chapter 1 today. Okay, it's a good example about what we're talking about. A good mentality, a good picture of the right type of person to have wealth. But, of course, as we got to remember, Job later on in the book of Job, he started to pat himself on the neck as well. So, but anyway. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. After losing everything, one, two, three, four, he worshipped. How many of these quasi-rich billionaire Christians, I wonder what they would do in a situation like Job's. Hmm? Would they be trembling and looking at the computer at the bank statement that says they're negative, all the millions they lost. When they can't afford to f fuel their 50 gallon, that's an exaggeration, uh, gas tank uh, truck. <laughs> yeah. And said, naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave. And the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Do, do you really grasp the enormity of that in Job? Do you? Some of you do, of course. I mean, some of you do. Some of you do. Praise the Lord. I, I Some of you do. But more, most often, most of you don't. <laughs> you, you don't. Okay? First Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 on to verse 10. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Doctrine according to godliness, being separate, other, that crosses dispensational lines. Godliness. That's what that's talking about. Okay? Talking about godliness. Alright? He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmising perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. And what were we reading to? Verse 10. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world. <laughs> and it's certain we can carry nothing out. You you can't even you can't even take the clothes on your back out with you. You can't even take your flesh with you. Roll that around in your head for a little bit, okay? And having food and raiment. Let us be there with content. And look back in Ecclesiastes 5, verse 12. The sleep of a laboring... The sleep. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm still not all with it. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. Go back to 1 Timothy chapter 6. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Being content with the simple things. I have clean clothes on and I ate breakfast today, finally. You know, 
all this is a luxury, all this is a blessing. Okay? Helpful. It's needful. Not according to that. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. Compromise. Compromise is the, the biggest enemy to anyone like this. They will compromise. They'll do what they know they shouldn't. They'll, they'll say things they know they shouldn't. They'll use scripture as a weapon to try to coax you into giving them money. Okay? Then, yeah. 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 Okay? And yes, scripturally, there, there's a time for that. Yes, but when you're doing it all the time, like Kent Hovind does, every single video the guy ever makes, is like, make sure you give to the ministry. We got a lot of stuff for the kids. Bring them down. He's got this thing because he's had a stroke or something. I don't know, the filthy Jesuit. Okay? Like, Dude, shut up. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 15 again. As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor, which he may carry away in his hand. And this also is a sore evil, that in all points as he came, so shall he go. And what profit hath he that hath labored for the wind? That's something to think about. Think about who's saying this. King Solomon. Okay? Verse 17. All his days also he eateth in darkness, and he hath much sorrow and wrath with his sickness. Go back to 1 Timothy chapter 6 again. 1 Timothy chapter 6 again. Verses 17 on to verse 21, to the close of the chapter. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. I've seen Christians, these millionaire Christians, uh, pervert this. It's like, well, I'm just enjoying myself. Yes, but you are making an idol of yourself and your money and you are boasting your covetousness. Go pound some sand and take a long walk off of a short pier. Okay? No. No. Okay? Yes. Gives us what? God who gives us all, gives us richly all things to enjoy. The things he gives us, we are to enjoy. Yes. Yes. And Enjoy, if you have riches of this world, the implication is God loveth a cheerful giver. Offhand, I can't remember the, uh, the scripture verse uh, reference for that, but uh, I think it's 2 Corinthians 9. God loveth a cheerful giver. You got this. Uh, there, there's a brother that I've known now for a, maybe a couple years. Um, who um, he does well for himself, but he gives, and with, without a second thought. Uh, and I mean, and when this brother gives, he gives. I mean, he gives. Uh, but that is a great example. Uh, he has the best, better things of this world. But see, he saved. He saved, and he is aware of these things. And he helps others. Okay. Again, going back to the video yesterday. The gifts that we have from the Lord are given to us so that we can share them and give them on to other people. Not hoard them for ourselves. 
which Christianity is all about hoarding for self, except to give money so you can pay for their stupid building and for their Jesuit trained cemetery and priest. Okay? But also, too, this is telling us that, again, God is not against you having uh, the things of this world. I mean, don't, 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 don't be a smart Alex about that. Okay? <laughs> All right? Of course, God doesn't, you know, God doesn't want you to be watching television. God doesn't want you to be going to Hollywood movies, stuff like that, okay? But if, you know, if you have working appliances, if you have uh, uh, working internet, st stuff like that, okay? Stuff like that, okay? You have those kinds of things, uh, worldly things. You have, uh, you have opulence, you have money, and you are a saint, okay? God's not against that. He's against it becoming an idol to you, to you. Okay, that's what he's against. Okay, that's why it's better, for, uh, it's easier for those of us who don't have it than those who do. Because those, those who have the best, better things of this world and are saints, brethren, pray for those brethren that you know of who are actually saved and have this world's goods. Because they got worse off than we do. Why? Because they got more ability to stumble than you and I. Okay? Seriously. Seriously. They look down on you because they got all the hoity-toity stuff. You, you pray for them. It's like, you know, you can, you can become a little too self-sufficient very quickly. You know? But God, again, is not against it. Okay, he isn't. He isn't. Verse 18. That they do good. According, uh, what is good? There's none good but who? God. Yes. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> that they do good. That they be rich in good works. Hold your place here. Hold your place here. Got to make this tie in. Got to make this tie in. Because... Uh, because of these filthy, sleazy believists, a lot of Christians, when they hear works, they get like, oh, dude, shut up. Uh, Ephesians 2, verses uh, uh, 8 on to 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. These are not salvific works. Okay? Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay? Verse 18 again in 1 Timothy 6. That they do good. That they be rich in good works. Ready to distribute. Willing to communicate. And that is not, God has blessed me so much. Uh, look, uh, let me tell you just how great I am because of how God blessed me. See, that's blessing, that's them praising themselves through God, not praising God through themselves. There, there is a big, subtle difference there. I, I, I'm not even going to say that. But there's an individual that I know dearly, uh, or love dearly, who does th that exact thing, where he boasts himself through God. It's like, well, I've got all, I've been done this and that. Or, that's not the kind of communication he's talking about there. Communicating the truth, okay? Not, not communicating of how blessed you are. Okay? People don't want to hear that. I mean, if, if, to, to, to bolster up the Lord? Sure. That's different. Like I said, there is a subtle difference. Big subtle difference between boasting God through you or boasting you through God. 
there's a huge but subtle difference there. Okay? And the thing is, most people can tell when someone, especially a Christian, is boasting themselves through God. Because most of the times what happens, you're, you're like, good, 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 good for you. I, I hope you get another grant under your belt while we barely pay our... Good for you. Can, can you tell me anything about uh, the Lord? Huh? Huh? That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. O oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings, and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. And now let's go to Luke chapter 12 and end this on a very appropriate note. Luke chapter 12. <coughs> Luke chapter 12. Verses 16 on to verse 34. <laughs> verse 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. God abhorreth the covetous. You will be like, well, Paul says, we, we cover that in yesterday's video, okay? For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. Uh, I'll, uh, uh, and he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Ah! <laughs> soul! Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said, to, said unto him, Thou fool. Thou fool. What is fool? Fool says in his heart there is no God. Hmm. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And we already covered in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6 about guys who uh, claim and act like gain is godliness. Again, there ain't nothing wrong with, uh, according to Scripture, there ain't nothing wrong with having those things. What's wrong is when you are what we are examining today. <laughs> That's the problem. And that is the majority. That's why it says not many mighty, not many noble, not many wise after the flesh. It doesn't say that it can't happen, but it says not many. And he said unto his disciples, 
Therefore I say unto you. Now also to you got to remember, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? The, the law was still binding. He was offering the kingdom of heaven on to the Jews. Okay? All right? And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, <coughs> what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you, that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass, and reference this with Isaiah 40, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, distinct, specific, kingdom of God, spiritual, Kingdom of heaven is always a reference onto the physical, literal kingdom in Jerusalem. Kingdom of God, especially in this context, is reference onto the spiritual. Okay? But seek ye the kingdom of God, and all those things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will, there will your heart be also. And that also sheds light on um, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. Or, um, yeah, uh, verse 10. The love of money is the root of all evil. When you love money, money is a means of providing for self. Okay? Is it not? Is it not? So when you love money, what is an idol? An idol is an extension of glorification of self. That's all it is. So when you love money, it's self-glorification. So when you claim you're saved, but yet everything you talk about, everything revolves around you, around your financial situation, about what you've done this and you've done that without any genuine concern for the other person you're having a conversation with. Out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh, you know? For where your treasure is there will your heart be also. If your treasure is in heaven, and, I, and I've experienced this, I've experienced the widow giving two mites. More, I, I, I've experienced that, um, and to be and to be honest, uh, there have been people before who have helped 
um, with like say given like five bucks and turns out that five bucks was just what was needed to pay the bills that was like just that amount to pay the bills and stuff like that you know it's like wow so the everything helps you know you know but see when your treasure is in heaven you're not overly concerned about departing with your earthly things whatever you have hence someone who um, someone who graciously gives a, a dollar to to anybody to or anything like that you know most of the times they give more than these people who parade themselves around about what they have I've given so much money to this and that you know you don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Okay, that is, uh, am, uh, being anonymous. You don't boast it. Okay? And when your treasure is in heaven, when your treasure is in heaven, the things of earth will go f uh, faintly dim in the light of His glory and grace. I would sing a hymn to you today, but I'm, I'm running out of wind, so <laughs> that's going to be it for this video. I uh, read that in um, Ecclesiastes today, and it's like, huh, very good. So that's going to be it. I'm going to get this video uploaded, Lord willing. Uh, thank you for watching this, if you do. Thank you for those of you who have prayed, uh, especially for myself, for uh, my lovely affliction. I just want one day where I feel okay. <laughs> I said that this morning in prayer. It's like, Lord, can you give me a day where I feel okay? <laughs> without, uh, you know, without my heart problems, without this annoying sickness. <laughs> but, uh, thank you. Uh, I hope you... Uh, found this fascinating. I hope this uh, was helpful. Thank you. Love you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.